Welcome to episode 86 of the Willie Thistle podcast, coming to you from the gorgeous state of New Hampshire. Today is Friday, November 2nd, 2018, and I'm your host, Corrine. This episode is sponsored by thewoollythistle.com. The Woolly Thistle brings the best of British and European yarns to us here in North America. Right now, we have all the books and magazines a knitter could ever want as the nights draw in. Wildwood by Marie Wallen, The Vintage Shetland Project by Susan Crawford, Shetland Wool Week 2018 and 2017, Amarisu, Making, Kate Davis's library of books and many, many more. Let the Woolly Thistle do the international shipping so you don't have to. This episode is also sponsored by Rowan Tree Travel. Rowan Tree Travel offers small group knitting trips to Scotland every year for knitters who yearn to travel to the source of their favourite yarns. They are expanding beyond their signature wool and whiskey trip to include knitting trips to England and Ireland as well as destinations further afield. You can escape the cold this winter and join them in Oaxaca, Mexico in January for an exploration of food and fiber in an area famous for its thriving arts community and beautiful textile traditions. Or you could spend a night in a castle and visit Beatrix Potter's home in England on their Knitting in the Northern Borders tour in May. Or you could even bring your knitting along trailside on a walking trip in the Cotswolds. If you like knit-alongs, try knitting along on one of Rowan Tree Travel's knitting adventures. Visit their brand new website at rowantreetravel.com. That's R-O-W-A-N-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-V-E-L.com to learn more about their trips on offer for 2019. That's rowantreetravel.com. Thank you, new listeners and returning listeners. It's great to have you here with us at the Woolly Thistle podcast. There is so much to talk about. It's been a while since we chatted, and I apologize for that. It's just been super busy. Uh, But let's get going here. I was in Paris. I took my daughter to Paris for a week at the very beginning of October. I was lucky enough to get really cheap flights on Aer Lingus, and I was able to buy them with points as well, which was fantastic. And we went the week of Columbus Day, so she only had to take four days off school instead of five. Uh, This was a once in a lifetime trip. She's 12 going on 21. And I thought this would be a really fun thing for mom and daughter to do for both of us just to get away. Uh, She loves to bake. And so we did a little shopping of baking and cooking shops as well as yarn shops. So that sort of evened things up. We stayed in the fifth district. I can't say that word in French, I'm afraid. Um, Arrondissement or something. And uh, it was fantastic. We were right off of uh, Muftart Road, which has a lovely little square in it with um, cafes all around. And we even saw a protest happen there one night. We enjoyed sitting in the cafes, drinking uh, Orangina and my soda and lime and um, eating Croc Monsieur and Croc Madame. And the weather was fantastic. We had maybe 70 degrees every day bright blue skies. We walked miles and miles and miles. The first day that we went out and around, uh, we put on 30,000 steps, which I've never ever done before. (laughs) And we walked from, um, we were quite close to Notre Dame Cathedral. And so we walked to Notre Dame Cathedral, all the way down to the Louvre, to uh, the Place de Concorde, to the Arc de Triomphe, to the Eiffel Tower. And then back down to our apartment. We actually ended up getting the metro back to our area, if I remember right. But it was fantastic. We had a great time. We got along just fine. It was wonderful. So let me tell you what I bought. I had seen that 
Christy Glass had recently been to Paris and she hired a tour guide to take her around the yarn shops. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. So I got in touch with her and got the name of her tour guide. And her name is Pauline Genito. And she is living in Paris. And her Instagram is Textile. I'll put her um, information in the show notes. But it's Paul Lillen, so P-A-U-L-I-L-E-N dot textile. And she was just lovely. We met at 10 o'clock one morning and we walked and took metros. And while we had been there a few days by this point and thought we knew how to get around Paris, she knew so much better. <laughs> she knew which metros to avoid and go through um, and just, you know, how to get us all over the place. So let me tell you where she took us. I have my little bag of goodies here and I'm probably not going to remember the exact order of uh, operations in terms of where we went when. She was very, very good at grabbing uh, the shop's business cards for me when I forgot. Ooh, we also went to Versailles. That was fantastic. And we had a whole adventure there of when my daughter lost her phone and only discovered it when we were at the furthest away point. We had walked miles, ridden our bikes further to the Petit Trianon. That's when she realized she'd left her phone way up at the the big palace. But you know what? We found it. It was handed in, and I was just absolutely thrilled by that. But anyway, like I said, we did visit some cooking stores, which were fantastic. The first one we went to was... De Hilleran, and that was on uh, Rue Coquillier, Rue J.J. Rousseau in Paris. This was right downtown in the center of Paris. And apparently this is where all the famous chefs cook. And the shop is about 200 years old. And that was like a treasure trove to wander around. And of course, that being the first shop we went to, my daughter bought a cast iron skillet there so that she can do her own crepes here at home. So we carried that around. It was quite small, but of course it was the heaviest thing we bought all day. And we also bought some chocolate molds and I bought a flan pan. So that was cute. But yeah, so I think one of the first stops we made yarn-wise was at La Droguerie, uh, Rue de Jour. That's right downtown in the heart of Paris too. This is the store that has the wall of bright, colorful cones. It's an old butcher's shop, I believe. And it still has all the old hooks and shelving and tile on the wall. These girls were really very friendly there. And of course, Pauline knew them because she used to work there. And this day, actually, more than yarn turned into a day of fabric purchases. And there I bought a beautiful turquoise aqua blue fabric. I don't know what brand it is, but it's got little orange and white and green flowers on it. And it's just very, very pretty. I could imagine a lovely little summer blouse out of this. So I got a couple of yards of that. And I also got some um, bias tape that was gray with little flowers on it. And I got some uh, bundles of uh, fabric there that is just little, I was all into the little flowers, the little tiny uh, Liberty-esque flowers. So I got a few bundles of that there. I didn't buy yarn there, I don't think, which is interesting, isn't it? And then from there, we went to another lovely shop called Un Mal à Lendroit. That's the best I can do. I've tried that several times and I can't say it. Um, And here I found a commercial yarn that is French. It's made in Cruz and it's called Fonti. And I got a few balls of this. It is 95% wool, 5% mohair. And it looks like it's machine washable if I'm reading that right. And it has flex in it. So it's very tweedy. And I got a couple of lovely gray ones. And I got a nice pink one. And I thought that that could become something rather nice one day. Um, I saw this uh, brand at most of the shops we went to, which was, which was fun. So I think that's where I got that. We did visit several other shops. Um, there was one down a lovely arcade. And I cannot remember the name of it. Uh, It was in an indoor mall arcade right in the center of the city. And again, what I bought there was fabric, and it was actually Liberty fabric. 
I think I'm having a very romantic or nostalgic moment buying these fabrics. This again, well, Liberty Alt usually is, um, very small flowers. But this particular one is sort of a green cream background. And it's got red roses and yellow roses with some blue little forget-me-nots on there. And it reminds me very much of my great aunt Sheila, whose house we used to visit every holiday up in Inverness when, when we were kids. And I think she had wallpaper or something that's very similar to this or evokes this in my memory. And so I love this and I'm happy to have it. Strange, isn't it, how the mind works? We went to another little shop, very little shop, and she had Holst Garn, which I know a lot of you want me to stock. I do get requests or inquiries about whether I would stock Holst. And I haven't yet. So I bought some while I was there and it was on the cone and she wound off 100 grams for me because that's how they do it. And of course, you know, this yarn being on the cone is in the grease, the spinning grease. So I do sell Jameson and Smith yarn that's on the cone. So it's got the grease still on it. This feels even more stringy, I would say, although I'm sure it washes up beautifully. I mean, this doesn't bother me at all, but I know it would bother some folks. And I remember Marie of um, oh Stitches in Sweden podcast. She is knit with this, but she always washes it first to get the grease off. Grease doesn't bother me. So I got that there, and I got a couple of mini skeins there, which I have knitted into my memories blanket, which has made a comeback. You know, when the weather changes and you want blankets, I've been knitting on that. I've knit a few squares. I, I've knit a couple from Paris and I've knit my Rhinebeck sweater already because the lovely, lovely Lisa of, you know, Fiber Nymph, she had these lovely little Rhinebeck, what did she call them? Rhinebecklets? I can't remember. She had these little mini skeins dyed up of Rhinebeck colors. So thank you for that, Lisa. Mine is already in my blanket. Oh, I just remembered the shop where I bought the Liberty fabric in the mall right downtown at Passage du Grand Cerf. Right downtown in Paris is Lil Weasel. And they actually have a shop on either side of the walk. So it's like they've got two shops. <laughs> All right, that was fun. Then we went all the way across town out to the 13th district because you can't go to Paris as a knitter and not go to Le bien -Aimé. And I was so lucky. Amy was there when I pulled in. So I got to say hello, and that was very nice. And I bought quite a bit of yarn, um, mostly as presents for my good friends here. Yeah, she, she had a lot of sport weight, and she had a lot of her new Aran weight. Not a lot of fingering yarn available there, so we all got some lovely uh, sport and some DK weight. So that's good, and I got myself one as well. Uh, I got myself, let's see, what what is this? Merino Sport, 100 gram, color is Winter Garden, and it's a nice beigey cream with beautiful speckles. I am a sucker for speckles, and I haven't broken into this. I really, I really should, and knit some of this into my blanket shouldn't I but you know what I'm kind of a skein hoarder when it comes to these pretty hand dyed yarns I don't find myself wanting to knit with them terribly much except for maybe socks but this isn't hardy enough for socks I'm much more an admirer like they're little trophies and I open up my cupboard and I see them and oh, you know what I'm talking about so Maybe what I'll do is I'll wind off some and knit it into my blanket and then wind it back up into a skin. <laughs> How lame am I? <laughs> oh, that, that's a good idea though, isn't it? So that's that. And I think other than that, when we went... Ooh, no, there's a little bit more. I went to, with Pauline, we went to Madame Sajou. And Madame Sajou has a lovely shop that sells all your embroidery and needlework needs and there I found these beautiful embroidery books little charts uh, I got the alphabet chart and I got another one that has cats and stars and snowflakes and birdies and they basically chart out how to do these little motifs the covers are gorgeous they're all very retro Parisian looking and I got some needles there. I got some thread. And then just lastly, to finish up 
telling you about my Paris piggery. When we went to Versailles, that was quite an adventure. We took the metro out first thing in the morning. I pre-bought tickets because, you know, you hear about the lines and how awful it is. I was dying for a pee when we when we got off the metro. It was awful. But because we had tickets already, we didn't have to wait too long to get in. In fact, we hardly waited at all. And we had the satisfaction of looking behind us and seeing the line just twist and turn you know around the corner people waiting to get tickets so that is something you should really consider if you're going to Versailles yeah I didn't have to wait in line at the bathroom I walked right in it was fantastic so that was good yeah that was really good and then yeah we got to see maybe the first half of the parts that are open to the public in the palace without huge crowds fantastic did not expect that so we got to see the salons and we learned about you know how basically the palace was made up of smaller apartments that you know these sisters would live in or this family would live in over here and this was their home and we got to see quite a bit of that we also saw the hall of mirrors which is very famous by the time we got to that the place was packed and i have a picture of me holding my camera up or i took a picture of me holding holding my camera up above my head, and it's just a sea of people. And it's a very beautiful hall. And at the time that it was built, mirrors were, you know, high technology. Of course, today we're kind of like, eh. But it's beautiful. The chandeliers are amazing. I've always wanted to go to Versailles. I have a thing for Marie Antoinette misunderstood woman but oh my goodness when you go there in person and if you've been there you'll know it is sprawling it is gigantic I mean not just the building but the grounds it just goes on and on and on of course going in October the gardens were past their best and were pretty much put to bed but we did enjoy riding the bikes out to the other palaces And uh, we saw Marie Antoinette's little village where she got to play at being a farmer and life was good. Of course, things were not good at that point. But yeah, so I got a lovely little project bag or pouch there. I think I'll use it for notions. And it's beautiful with its uh, woven roses and an M on there for Marie Antoinette. Yeah, I'm really super happy with that. We had a fabulous time and I hope my lovely wee girl remembers this trip uh, for the rest of her life. I hope that she'll maybe take her kids to Paris one day. Some people thought I was being very brave going off on my own with her to do that. And I have to admit, yeah, I was a little worried. But let me tell you, Paris was an easy city to navigate. It's not too big. So, you know, with a little bit of homework beforehand and fortitude that you can do this, you can totally do this. We had a fabulous time and I would do it again. So if anybody wants to go. Oh, there's a thought. Let's go to Paris. <laughs> we could do a trip to Paris. That would be fun. The weather has to be perfect, though. All right, so let's move on. I was going to tell you all about my Rhinebeck weekend, and I have a haul from there, too. As you know by now, I am a huge fan of Patricia and Tidal Yarns. She's out of Connecticut, and she sources local wool to make her yarn that is spun at Green Mountain Spinnery. And every year I pretty much get a sweater's worth of yarn from her knit up my sweater and wear it constantly so I love local wool I know that I import a lot of wool from overseas and I love the wool that I have and it's quite rare for me to buy yarn from anyone other than myself these days because I am spoiled by all the beautiful yarn that I have so Hopefully it tells you just how much I admire the yarn that Tidal Yarns makes and um, it's very wearable. I love her patterns. You get a pattern of your choice when you buy yarn from her. And so this time I went with a worsted weight yarn because I want this sweater really knit up quickly and I don't think I've ever knitted a worsted sweater. This is called Tidal Comfort. It's a top-down raglan. It's got a lovely wee pocket down at the bottom. So I'm looking forward to this and I bought a very sort of purpley pink color Mm, cochineal and something I can't read she always makes it a code and I'm not sure what the what it means maybe she'll tell me I'm sure she did tell me and I've forgotten and then uh, the contrast color because there's a band of contrasting color along the bottom I think has 
cochineal too. It's more of a gray lavender color. Anyway, she sources her yarn locally and this year she has a Romney base and it has come from New Hampshire which is perfect. It has come from Mary Isling, who is a farmer and artist down near Keene, New Hampshire. And long before I was knitting, I bought a painting from her of a sheep, and it's one of her Romney sheep. And I've sold her cards in the shop before too. So she is a farmer who's working with Patricia. And let me tell you, oh my God, I can't wait to cast this on. I need to ball it up, but it's gorgeous and it's going to be a perfect winter sweater that I'm going to really enjoy wearing. Ooh, I just found some fiber in there. All right, what else did I get? Yes, also, oh gosh, um, Wing and a Prayer, my friend Tammy, she was spending at Rhinebeck this year, which is just terrific. She was also there with her animals, so she was doing double duty. And I saw her... 20% wool, 80% alpaca blend in natural light grey. And oh, this is just very, very lovely. I'm not sure where she got this milled up because she does use a couple of different places. But I'm really happy to have that. And then I went to Carol Foster and got some of her sock yarn. I actually got a little mini skein set. And I got a little stitch marker uh, from Patricia P. Fortune's Nitography. I have a little stitch marker. Um, so yeah, I got that. That is from Foster Sheep Farm. And it is merino and uh, nylon. And I bought some more minis there to put into my blanket and these are from a company I don't know called Spirit Trail Fiber Works and let's see where they are out of don't know but these were just little minis that were really reasonably priced and I thought yep this will do for my memory blanket and I'm always excited and happy to have new bags from Matter Root Maine <laughs> so I have a new bag from Matter Root Maine don't I uh, she had these totes, big, big totes, and it's got the sheep and the baby sheep on it, and black handles, so yep, happy to have this, really thrilled. Oh, I just found Rhinebeckles, Rhinebeckles, this is her smoothie colorway, this is uh, Fiber Nymph Dye Works, and her lovely gift of a mini skein, it's called a Rhinebeckles, how cute, so I did really well, didn't I? I've got a lot of knitting to do. But I really enjoy my purchases. That'll probably be me uh, for personal shopping for a while. I am now a professional yarn shopper. And uh, it takes a lot for me to get excited about yarn for myself these days because I am just surrounded by wonderful yarn. All right, so let's move on. That's enough wool piggery, personal wool piggery. So let's get started. I haven't even got started yet. <laughs> This episode includes Off the Needles, On the Needles, Cal News, The Willy Thistle Update, A Coop Cast, and then we'll wrap it up. So Off the Needles, real fast, I have nothing, not nada. But On the Needles, I have a couple of things that are currently happening. The first is the Fula Snood by Donna Smith. And I found this in my copy of Shetland Wool Week 2018. I advertised in this magazine, so they sent me a copy, which is always nice when they do that. And as soon as I saw the Fuller Snood, I'm like, I have to knit that. It's just two colors. It's Jameson and Smith, two-ply jumper weight in colors 1A, which is a cream, and 27, which is a medium gray. Love the two colors together. It's a very pretty... Uh, feral design I just love it and it's color work in the round round and round and round and round and round and I've just crossed the halfway point so it's basically a big cowl and you're going to be able to wrap it around twice at least maybe three times <laughs> if it's really cold out and uh, it's all I want to knit right now it's easy I do need to follow the chart it's not quite intuitive enough um, it's not quite a simple a color work pattern where I know it all in my head but it's easy enough to follow and I use washi tape to mark where I am talking of washi tape I have to get in touch with Knit Sonic she is coming out with washi tape with designs with her own feral designs on it isn't that genius i want to talk to her and try and get some in the shop so that i can have it <laughs> because i use washi tape all the time to mark where i am on my on my charts and i put the washi tape 
above the line I'm working on. So because, you know, you work from the bottom up when you're knitting, I want to see what came before. So I don't put the washi tape under the line I'm working on. I put it above the line I'm working on. And that way I can see that things match up the way they should. Isn't that genius? I know you all do that anyway. So let's see. So I'm knitting on that and quite happy knitting on that. Still on the needles is my Rosamund uh, sweater by Marie Wallen from her Bloomsbury book. I'm knitting that in Rowan Felted Tweed in the avocado colorway. It's a sweater knitted in pieces, knitted flat, lots of ribbing and cables on US 3, higher, higher sharps. The two sleeves are done and I'm working up the front of the body and I still have the back to knit. And of course, this is my piece for the Woolly Thistle Sweater Cal. It's not finished. It's not finished. I kind of put it down before going to France. I'd reached the point where I was having to do arm shaping as well as neck shaping, I think. And it just felt too much, uh, taking up too much mental capacity with the thought of uh, getting me and my little one round uh, Paris. So I, I left it at home and I brought the color work, which was a great choice, right? You know, having to have ball management on planes and metros and things. What was I thinking? But I did it. Somehow I managed it and, and that's all good. So I need to get back to my Rosamund, which I will. I know I will. I can't wait to have the finished sweater because I think it'll be really, really wearable. But for now, it's sitting, waiting in the wings. Something very strange is happening to me too. I've never been a huge fan of shawl knitting, but shawls are catching my eye right now, and it's outright weird. I mean, I love a good hap. I do love a good hap. But, you know, other shawls, I've got my color affection that I knitted in Blacker's Tamar, and it's beautiful. I love that. But I can't think of too many other shawls that I, you know, apart from my haps, I've got two haps. I can't think of many other shawls that I just love. But I keep seeing these shawls and I'm getting the urge to knit them. So let me tell you, I want to knit the shawl by So Very Shannon that was in Lina 6. It's a worsted weight shawl and I think it's the Fiber Company. But I would knit mine in Ul Centrum, which I have here in the shop. That's gorgeous. And then I just saw in Making Six a shawl by Vera Rain that has colorwork stripes and lace. And I just want to knit it. I don't know what she's knitting it with in her pattern, but I'm sure I could make something from something I have here. Um, so these are the two like urgently needing to knit shawls that I have. And th this is new territory for me. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I was a very confirmed sock knitter and that seems to have come and gone a little bit, although I do want to knit some socks here and there. I'm a full-on sweater knitter these days and I'm very happy about that. And now I want to knit shawls as well. It's just, I need more hands. <sighs> I hope you're enjoying the show. I'm getting a lot off my chest. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. So yeah, so that's what's on and off the needles. So let's move on to Cal News. Lots and lots of Cal News. We just finished up the Woolly Thistle sweater Cal. And thank you so much to everybody who participated. There are lots and lots of finished sweaters. And let me tell you, one of the nicest things that happened to me at Rhinebeck, uh, the podcaster meetup, where knitters coming up and saying hello and telling me, this is the first sweater I've knitted and I knitted it in the Cal. <laughs> That's really amazing. I had that happen quite a bit, and I just want to say thank you. You made my day, and welcome to Sweater Knitting. I hope you keep knitting sweaters. I asked everybody, are you going to knit another sweater, and everybody said yes, so that is fantastic. Isn't that great? So the cowl is finished. It finished on October 24th, and with the help of my wonderful assistant Maggie, she went in and pulled the winners using random.org. No, random so congratulations to everyone who finished their sweaters and to those who are not quite finished but are still knitting, you will have a freaking sweater. How cool is that? So congratulations. I love the camaraderie and the chatter thread. There's pages and pages and pages of supportive chatter there. That's what our cows are known for and I just love it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to the wonderful designers who participated by offering discounts before the cow started and pattern and book prizes for the end of cow winners and I'm going to announce them now. The grand prize is a gift certificate of $100 to the Willy Thistle and the hashtag if you want to go check things out online on Instagram is TWT Sweater Cal 2018 
So go check out and make sure you tagged your own projects with that hashtag. So here are the prizes and winners. And I will also list them on the Willie Thistle Ravelry group just as soon as I can. So let's start. First off, we have the Bloomsbury book donated by Marie Wallen. And that lucky winner is Peggy from North Carolina. Your Ravelry ID is Peg MCC. Congratulations. Then we have Heather from Maine, who is Lacewing on Heather. You win a pattern from Annie Claire's Ravelry store. We have two winners for Gudrun Johnson's patterns of your choice from her Shetland Trader collection. We have LT Gen 2000. And Cynthia CC, who is Cynthia from Ohio. So then we have lovely Anne Pinaguri, who offered three winners a pattern each. Make sure you pick English ones. And uh, the winners are T. Craven, who is Tracy from Ohio. Knit for Init, K from Georgia. And Silver Spring Knit, who is Nora from Maryland. Congratulations. Kristen Kapoor, also known as Through the Loops, has three winners for her September house sweater pattern. And that is Maria 0608, who is Marie in Connecticut. Labentier, who is Lulu in California. And Lou in Indiana, LK Lawson Knits. Hooray! Fantastic. Elizabeth Doherty, Blue Bee Studio. She offered one hard copy book, top down reimagining set in sleeve design. And that goes to Prairie Fire Bird, who is Sherry in North Dakota. And she also offered two self-published patterns from her Ravelry store. And the winner for that is Sela DE, who is Tammy, maybe from Delaware. I'm not sure it didn't say on her Ravelry. Then we have Truly Myrtle Libby Johnson, who offered three pattern prizes from her Ravelry store. The winners are Susan from New Jersey. That's Pinecrest60. Hi, Susan. Great to meet you and hubby. Then we have Import, who is Lucy in Pennsylvania, and Wooly Needle, who is Carolyn in Massachusetts. Kristen Drysdale, also known as Scandi Work, offered three pattern prizes for three win winners. We have Knit Nut 10, who is Cynthia in California, NN Cott in Massachusetts, and the wonderfully named Make Socks Not War, Dana from North Carolina. Congratulations, winners. But there's still more. Then we have Diana Waller's new ebook, Fog and Frost, and that goes to Griffin, who is Holly in New York. Helen Magnuson from Iceland offered three sweater patterns, and they are listed out. I'll try and say it, because I'm good that way. <laughs> We've got Hjeltland Spesa, Galmadags, and Femor de Hurlals. Sorry. One each for three winners. So the three winners are Suna, Mimi MC, and Addicted Knit, who is Mickey in Illinois. Hey, Mickey! Congratulations! Bristol Ivy offered a pattern prize from her Ravelry collection. And the winner of that is Ginny, who is Virginia from Minnesota. Congratulations. Lovely Melody B. Mandarines offered two patterns from her Ravelry store. And those winners are Black Cat Yarn, who is Rachel from Philadelphia. And I'm missing, uh, okay, I'm sorry, that's a technical problem. I'm missing a winner. So I will list that winner in the Ravelry thread. Sorry, you're not getting announced this time. Susan Crawford, the imitable author of the Vintage Shetland Project. She's offering three patterns, her Boland, the warm time, Wartime Farm Sleeveless Pullover, and Diamonds Are Forever. And the three winners are Out of This World, who is Mary Beth from Pittsburgh, Camarelle, who is Cheryl, and Death, who is Michelle from Illinois. Congratulations, winners. MJ Mucklestone offered the following prizes. Stopover, Volvest, and Sigla to three lucky winners. And they are Robin from North Carolina. That's Pony Bird. Suzanne in Indiana. That's Who's Your Susie? And my very good friend, Sarah Pomegranate, who is Sarah in Pennsylvania. Congratulations. And the grand prize of $100 to the Woolly Thistle is Whirly Bird, who is Margaret in Connecticut. Ooh, that's a lot of prizes. Thank you to all the participating designers. You guys rock. Thank you so much for your generosity. And 
I hope that prizes will make their way to their winners shortly. On that note, I will be getting in touch with the designers and they will get in touch with you about getting your prize to you. If you don't hear from your prize giver in a reasonable amount of time, send me an email and I will happily follow up with them. But I know that they'll all get their prizes out to you just as soon as they can. More Cal news. We now have the Eto Shawl Cal starting on November 1st. This shawl was formerly known as the Shibui Shawl and it was designed by lovely Melody B. Mandarines and it was in issue 4 of Lina magazine. It's now available individually on Ravelry 2. And this is a large shawl knitted out of Plutolope, a firm favorite here at the Woolly Thistle. She used six colors and I've been selling sets of these six colors to you so that you can knit along with us starting November 1st. If you want to knit it all in one color, that's completely fine too. The object of this cal is to get as many of us knitting and enjoying Plutolope. It's a little sort of memory of our rusty cal where everybody knit the rusty cardigan out of Plotolope and we had a whole new appreciation for Plotolope and I'm still in love with it. So we are having a cal and the idea is to knit along and just enjoy knitting with Plotolope and knitting this lovely big shawl that's going to keep you warm all winter long. Uh, so it's not, you know, it's just to knit through with us. It's not to, you know, finish by a hard deadline or anything like that, though we will set a term for the cal to happen. My good friend Maggie will be hosting this cal mostly and I will be popping in and out to say hello as well. So yeah, that's all the cal news. Maggie and I have been plotting about future cals though and we have some great ideas coming down the pike. So, you know, keep listening to the podcast. And are you signed up for my newsletter? I have a lot of people on my newsletter list and I wasn't sending out any newsletters at all. And then I realized that really, if people are signing up for a newsletter, I should be giving them a newsletter. So now I am. And I know that many of you are taking advantage of the special discounts that I offer my newsletter uh, subscribers. Things that I never talk about on the podcast or in Instagram is only in the newsletter. So if that interests you, sign up. You just go to the shop, go down the bottom of the page, and there you will see where you can put your email address to sign up. And right now I'm sending an email out once a month. I'd like to send it out more than that, maybe twice a month, every other week. But for now it's once a month, and I hope it's not annoying to you. If it is, you unsubscribe, and that's all well and good. But I would definitely... If you're a fan of the Willy Thistle and the yarn here and you like a deal, it might be worth you your while signing up. And if you have signed up, thank you. I appreciate it. It's another good way for me to get out information about the shop and what's coming and going here. Okay, let's move on to the Willy Thistle update. The Willy Thistle is doing great as always, and I really appreciate you shopping with me and telling your friends about your purchases. Uh, by sharing on Instagram. That makes a huge difference, word of mouth, and I appreciate it when you do that. It all helps immensely get the word out about the yarns I stock here. And as soon as people learn about it, they come to the shop. And the more that happens, the more I'm able to buy more yarn, find new interesting yarn for you, and just keep the thing going, and I love it. So let's talk about what's in the shop right now. Lina 6 has come out since we last talked, and sales have been extremely strong for this issue. It's always strong, but it's been ridiculously strong, (laughs) this issue, and for good reason. It's a fantastic issue. I think we're all just really excited for the cooler weather. It was such a hot summer up here in the northern hemisphere, and now it's getting dark, and the nights are drawing in, and we've even had snow flurries here, so, you know, having our lina is what we want. Making magazine, issue number six, black and white. This issue is phenomenal. I don't know what to say. These girls are... All these magazine people <laughs> are just doing a phenomenal job and they they start out strong and doing 
you know, making beautiful magazines, but they're just getting better with every issue. And Making Six is no exception. It's going live, or it went live by the time you hear this on October 30th, and it includes essays from Shetland and Norway, projects from my friend Casey Stevens, who makes the beautiful little pouches and tote bags. She sells them at Squam. She's teaching at Squam, and they're just lovely. And she's got a couple of projects in in there for you to make your own. Dear Annie Claire is making elderberry syrup and includes a recipe for that in making. And there's just so much more. And Amarisu also just came out and that has Lori Graham's notebook in there as well as patterns from Andrea Murray and Caitlin Hunter and Fiona Alice and just there's just so much good stuff out there. So all of that is in the shop or coming to the shop or just went in or, you know, it's there and hopefully I can keep them in stock for you. Shetland Wool Week 2018. I know many of you wanted that and it sold, the pre-order sold out the day I put it in the shop and there was a lot of them. And so more are coming from Shetland and maybe they'll be in the shop by the time you hear this. But this is a great issue too. This is right from Shetland. Even the ads, the ads include people who are right there in Shetland. And the woolly thistles there too. But there's many patterns. Of course, there's the Fula Snood that I mentioned earlier. There's the hat by Ella Gordon. That's called the Einer hat. I think I'm saying that right. There's the Clique cardigan by Marjolein Richard, which is lovely. There's a lot of patterns. Tori Searstead has a lovely pattern, a lovely color work mittens. I love Tori. Luna Mitts by Anne Yunsen. Those are very pretty, very light lacy mittens. Good stuff in here. I love this. I've been carrying this around. This went all over Paris with me for looking at on the train and whatnot. Okay, so coming to the shop and hopefully maybe it's already in the shop and I did talk about this before maybe and I did put a teaser post on Instagram. There are Kirk's Crofts and Bothies coming from Scotland. I have them here in the shop. They are little miniature crofts and Bothies are little tiny crofts and Kirks are churches with steeples. And so you can make your own little village and those will be in the shop very soon. They're made by a mother-daughter team called Baclivy Pottery. And I'm sorry if I told you this story before, I can't remember. Baclivy is very close to Dune. I used to live in Dune, which is very close to Dunblane and Stirling. And Baclivy's right around there. And when I was just, you know, wandering down a wee merry path on Instagram, I came across Baclivy Pottery. I saw they did these wee houses and I was like, that's it. That's going in the shop if they'll sell them to me. And they did. I love these wee houses. I've got a collection here at home because when my sister and I, our, um, on our travels around Scotland, we would always buy each other a wee craft. So she and I both have a wee collection. And when she was here in September, she got one. I think she took a craft as well, I hope, maybe. can't remember now. But anyway, we've added to her collection with this. And it's lovely, and I'm hoping that you like them too. The beautiful project bags by Wild and Wo- Woodsy um, finally are going in the shop, I promise. I'm sorry I've been holding back on these. They're super lovely. They've got a lovely hand to them. They've got her big heavy zipper on there. They're beautifully made. And I just haven't been able to get them in the shop. I think it's all to do with photography, actually. I might as well pause and tell you here this right now. The shop is really, really busy, (laughs) which is fantastic. It's fantastic. And just today, I put a job opening up on Instagram and I'm hoping to find an operations manager. Right now, I am working with the help of uh, Susie and Maggie who come in and pack orders, but most of my day gets spent doing the daily operations in the shop, which include things like inventory, ordering inventory, receiving the inventory, dealing with any problems with that, making sure that the shop has everything it needs so that we can sell it. And also, the girls, when they're not here, I'm packing the orders as well. My husband helps out. My kid is also helping out. Well, actually, both of them have helped out. Uh, My daughter is, we're trying to get get her in here every week so that she can pay for her phone program. (laughs) But anyway, I digress as usual. So anyway, it's very busy. It's a full family affair at this point. And we've got Maggie and Susie here. And I've decided that... I need more time to do 
more of the other work, such as sourcing new lines of yarn. Actually following through on the connections I make with these wonderful yarn producers, right now I don't get time to make sure I follow up and get those yarns in. And that's a disservice to you. So I would like to have someone in the shop who is an operations manager. They will take care of the inventory. They will take care of the ordering of the inventory and the receiving of it coming in and making sure that that whole daily operation which happens all day every day is running smoothly they'll also be printing off your orders calculating the shipping for those orders and getting them ready to be packed by the packers or packing them herself whoever that person eventually is it's not a full-time job it could be a full-time job i'm hoping that the mother's hours will entice just the right person but the job is monday through friday and it is here in the shop so it's not something that can be done remotely unfortunately so if you have any interest in working here at the woolly thistle in this capacity and if you have retail experience or inventory management experience or e-commerce experience all of that would go a long way to us working together get in touch send me an email at hello at the woolly thistle.com put operations manager in your uh, subject line so that i know that's what we're talking about when that email comes through and i hope to have somebody in here in the next few weeks to help me with that and that will free me up to do a lot of the other work that i just can't seem to get to ever so Thank you, customers, wonderful customers, for getting me to a point where I am busy enough that I need uh, someone in here every day helping on that side of things. I'm growing. The shop is growing. I want to really work hard to continue growing. But most importantly, I want to continue offering the best yarn and the best customer service that I can. I know many of you are very happy with the service and the speed at which you get your orders from the Woolly Thistle. I hear that all the time and I appreciate knowing that you like that and I want that to continue so I need to get a bit of help in here because honestly the last couple of weeks have been mental because I don't have enough hours in the day. So we're going to do that and I'm very excited about it. Man that was a tangent. Okay so Let's see, highlights in the shop right now. Vintage Shetland Project is here. It's beautiful and I'm selling them uh, like hotcakes. So if you would like one, you should order it. The other thing too that I need to tell you about, I just put a wish list on the shop. This means that without an account, you can create a wish list. You can share it by emailing it or however you want to share it, Facebook, whatever. You can share it with your husband, your kids your parents, whoever is going to be buying you a holiday gift this year, you can share your wish list from the shop. I think that's pretty brilliant because I know that I do get husbands from time to time trying to order stuff for their beloveds and they don't really know what they're doing, (laughs) which is really cute. But let's be effective. Give them a wish list that they can pick from and you will get what you want. So the wish list is up now you don't have to have an account to create or share the wish list but um, you can create an account and that will save it there too so i hope that you like that addition to the shop give me any feedback you want about that i'd be interested to hear it but do start using it in fact i have this is the first time i've talked about it. i haven't mentioned it on instagram yet and it's already being used i probably have 20 or 25 wish lists already set up by people so um I think it's a good feature to have, especially at this time of year. So I'm excited about that. Wildwood by Marie Wallen is also in the shop. And I think all those orders, all those pre-orders went out as it did with uh, Vintage Shetland. So pre-orders are behind us. We're now in general stock. Both these books are also available for wholesale or your library might want to stock it. I would love to hear from libraries. So yeah, get in touch and I can set you up with a wholesale account if that's what you're doing. But yep, I have plenty in stock of both and you should be able to get your copy without too much trauma or hassle. Okay, uh, yarn. Tuku wool is in pretty good supply. I am out of a few colors and so is the supplier. 
but I've been told that in mid-November we will be getting a large order back in so I'll be getting a big order in in November and that'll be good I have a big order in with Rauma I'm getting a lot more strict garn so a lot many more colors and strict garn I'm really beefing up that selection and that should be here maybe by the time you hear this if not right after lots of lopi I'm getting through lots and lots of lopi so I'm ordering that a lot and keeping the plot lopi and the let lopi in good supply I think I might do some let lopi kits or Pluto lopi kits I'm thinking Jennifer Steingas she has so many great patterns that lend to the lopi so would you like to see that if so I'll get going on that Oh, I'm excited. Little Grey Sheep is coming back. I just uh, secured uh, some more of that. And that'll be coming. And there'll also be some fingering weight in there as well. I'll, I'm replenishing all the DK that I had before, plus maybe a couple of different colors. But we're going to have some fingering weight minis. So that'll be nice. Ul Centrum is sitting here waiting to go in. I've got a lovely big replenishment of that with some new colors as well. That is gorgeous yarn. If you are at all interested in a uh, lustrous, heavy DK, light worsted weight yarn from Sweden, this is good stuff. Mondom is back and in good supply right now. And we've got lots of the uh, Mondom bags. And if you buy three skeins of Mondom, you can buy the bag for five bucks. So that's a little, little deal for you there. And Bruska, I have a select maybe five or six colors in Brusca, and that yarn is lovely. It's DK weight. It's really, really wooly wool. Sorry, that's not, that's overused. There's so many words that are getting overused. Let me think. It's spongy. It's got that sticky feel, but it's more spongy. And I think it would knit a sweater that would keep you really warm. It would conform to shape. You know, so if you if you knitted a sweater with shaping, it would have lovely shaping um, and structure to it. This yarn was used in, in a design in Lina 6 that was actually designed by uh, Rosa Pomar, who is the maker of the yarn. So that'll be in the shop or going in the shop right around the time you hear this. And I'm really, I really like it. It's the colors I chose, if I say so myself, are beautiful. What else? Knitting Gansies by Beth Brown Reinzel is in the shop for all you Gansy knitters and I know there's a lot of you out there and we have lots of Frangipani available and Beth Brown Reinzel is out of Vermont next door so um, I really like that connection so that is a great book it's been around for a long time but it's recently updated with new photos and some new information and maybe some new ways of doing things so that is a lovely book. It's a lovely hardback book. Renee Callahan, who is East London Knits, her new book, Recollection, is going in the shop any minute. And of course, Pom Pom. I think they have just finished reprinting issue 26, and I know a lot of you are waiting for that. That's the one with the beautiful sweater on the front with the moon and the celestial um, imagery on there. So I will have those coming back and I also have issue 27 coming which has been guest edited by Noragon who is another one from New Hampshire. So I love that. The cover on that book, the, the cable sweater on that is just astonishing. And so that's coming as well as Knits About Winter which is a book that Pom Pom is publishing for this winter and that is slated for the Woolly Thistle too. How are you doing? Are you hanging in there? My throat is a little bit scratchy, but we're almost finished. British Breeds, which is Marie Wallen's brand new yarn, uh, will be coming to the Woolly Thistle in the next few weeks, not too long. The Woolly Thistle will be the only retailer to have this here in the United States and Canada. The, this is a collection of 12 yarns, and I'll talk more about that as we get closer. But I know Marie has been selling that it's been received really, really well, and of course it goes with the patterns out of Wildwood, so you might be interested in knowing more about that, and I will talk more about that in the next episode. We have lots of kits. The Silver Forest kit. I'm wearing my Silver Forest today. I wore this to Rhinebeck and I got lots of lovely compliments. Thank you. Um, so I have kits for this and more are coming. They're sold out right now. The Scalloway Tam kit by Marie Wallen in Jameson Spindrift is doing really well and there's a few of them left. 
Piri Fleur's kit is out of stock, but more is coming. Same with the Fair Isle Cap kit, more is coming. The Edo Shawl kit, which is uh, the cowl that we're getting ready to start, more is coming of that too. Lars Dadder is in stock, that's by Kristen uh, Drysdale. That's that lovely Pluto Lopi sweater. Um, the Cruden vest, which is by Isolde. That's a colorwork sleeveless vest. I have kits for that. And I just introduced my Agatha sock set, which is a ball of West Yorkshire spinners, my Agatha sock pattern in print form, and a little uh, woolly thistle zipper pouch, which is good for sock knitting. And that has done really well. Thank you so much if you've ordered one of those. Um, it's got me thinking all kinds of things. I have, I've had this pattern for socks called Evelyn socks in the back of my mind. In fact, it's, it's already been test knitted and written up. It just needs to be fine tuned. And it's a toe up sock. And I think I really want to knit it cuff down or write the pattern cuff down. So I might give that a go. But anyway, those little wheels are turning because I think that would be a nice little kit for the shop as well. So I think that's all I have for the Willy Thistle update for you this time. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that you found something of interest and maybe you'll go visit the shop and check it out a little bit further. So why don't we move right along to the Coopcast? <laughs> I've got a broody chicken. I just came to collect eggs. She was sitting on six eggs. And she's not happy with me taking them. I'm sorry. They're not all yours though. And it's pouring. Can you hear it? It's lovely out though. It's cooler. I'm in wool, wearing a sweater and woolly socks. Hello. Well, thank you for listening to another episode of the Willy Thistle podcast. I really love that you listen and I love hearing from you. So keep in touch. And I think all that's left to say is that if you go out, take your knitting and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to New Hampshire Knits. You can find the Ravelry group at NH Knits. You can find me on Ravelry as NHK Claire, on Instagram, NH underscore Knits, and you can email me at nhknits001 at gmail.com. And you can find the Woolly Thistle all over the internet at the Woolly Thistle with two L's in Woolly.